Right. Greg Clugston, SRN News. Liberty Council warns uh, children's book publisher and distributor Scholastic is pushing gender ideology and sexual confusion. It provides an LGBT resource guide for teachers and caregivers, in addition to a growing list of books with same-sex, transgender, and queer themes. Liberty Council's Matt Staver says Scholastic is now complicit in creating the classroom as a factory. This is SRN News. The remaining members of the Pac-12 are resorting to legal action in efforts to salvage a crumbling conference. Oregon State and Washington State have filed a complaint in Washington State Court against the Pac-12 and Commissioner George Klyovkov. It seeks a court order preventing 10 departing members from standing in the way of the two schools' efforts to rebuild the conference. The Pac-12 currently has 12 members, but 10 of them are leaving next year. Southern California, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon are leaving for the Big Ten. Stanford and Cal are leaving for the ACC, and Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah are leaving for the Big 12. I'm Geffen Coolbaugh. The remains of two people who died in the 9-11 attack at the World Trade Center have been identified. Authorities confirmed the ID of the remains of a man and woman. It comes as days ahead of the 22nd anniversary of the September 11, 2001 attacks. More details at srnnews.com. The following program is sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Get ready with your legal questions and call Patrick now. 877-943-9673. Again, that's 877-943-9673. The Law Office is open. And now your host, Patrick Smith. This is a special edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, Episode 100. Congratulations, Patrick. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. I appreciate that special congratulations. And welcome, Florida, to the 100th episode of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. We are happy to be with you this Saturday, September 9th. And let's do what we do best. Let's answer your legal questions today. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local studio line. 877-943-9673. You can give us a call now with your legal question or email us, Patrick, at Attorney Patrick Smith. Dot com And with us, the usual crew, Yumiko, the producer, Brian, the call screener, the excellent Joe Weaver, Peter, the intern, and our very special guest, attorney Matt Kendall. Matt, welcome back to the show, buddy. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. I didn't realize it was your hundredth show. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's pretty special and definitely mm. feeling the love. Thank you to everyone here at Salem. And got a special note from uh, the captain, from the Captain's America Third Watch. I mean, uh, you know, just everybody loving on the show. Got a special graphic today. And uh, someone was even nice enough to take my parking spot in the parking lot today. So I really, you know, I appreciated that. 877 <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Matt, how's everything in the criminal defense world? Give everyone kind of an <laughs> update on uh, what's trending in criminal law oh things are good uh police are still out there creating business for us so as long as that's going on we're we're doing well i always thought about that because there was one time where i saw this interaction between an attorney so an attorney saw his client get pulled over in his parking lot like in the lawyer's parking lot and the interaction went like this the attorney walked out and saw the client get out of his car a client in his 80s and heard the law enforcement officer instruct him get back in your vehicle and he said no and then he started just walking around and the law enforcement officer continuing to say sir i said get back in your vehicle and basically the, uh, the driver of the vehicle turned to the officer and said look my wife's ill i'm going to get her inside then i'll come back and i'll deal with you and it worked. The officer sort of took a step back, let him get his wife situated, came back. And the best part of this story was the officer said, sir, you ran that stop sign. And he goes, no, sir, I didn't. And he goes, why? I, I watched you do it. He goes, no, I definitely stopped before the sign. And you want to know how I know? He goes, you saw that lady I walked in. Had I actually run that stop sign, she would still be yelling at me about it. <laughs> So, and then the attorney basically engaged and said something to the officer about, thank you so much for drumming up another case for me or something like that. And, <laughs> and the officer said, y'all just have a good day and let them all go. But I was like, you know, it, it is sort of a, oftentimes a generator for cases for criminal defense guys. So, well, listen, without them arresting, without things being illegal and about 
without the police enforcing the law, we really don't have a job. Yeah. yeah. So thank you to all the law enforcement out there who keep us safe day in and day out and generate cases for Mr. Kendall and all the other criminal defense attorneys out there. 877-943-9673. I'm attorney Patrick Smith. This is the 100th edition of the attorney Patrick Smith show. So give us a call now. 877-943-9673. By the way, I have a pair of uh, Universal Orlando tickets to give away, courtesy of 102.5 The Bone. So we'll give those away at some point in the show. Yumiko, you're queued up to do that when we, we pick a winner. So 877-943-9673. Or email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Chuck in Sun City Center. Chuck, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hi, Patrick. Uh, Chuck here. Hey, Chuck. Uh I've got a power of attorney question for you. Fire away. Okay. Uh, my sister is attempting to obtain plenary garden, guardianship over me. Uh, prior to our litigation date, which is September 26th, she took my house keys, my car keys, my computer, and would not release any medical uh, records for me. So I, I, I have... I don't have anything in my hands. And I'm wondering, is that legal that she she's prevented me from going into my own house, my own car, and I can't see any medical records? Well, so let's remove. So, Chuck, do you have an attorney representing you in this right now? Uh, only the uh, the, the counsel at uh, Hillsborough County uh, uh uh, gave me so you have a court appointed attorney for the guardianship here <laughs> that's correct yeah that's the technical term yeah yep so what i would do is reach out to your attorney and ask them that question specifically because it's going to be intensely fact driven so let's take the guardianship out of the equation for a second let's just say you had a sister who did this and there is no guardianship proceeding going on yeah obviously it's wrong that's theft i mean taking someone's property uh, is you know a minimal right. civil theft and maybe even a crime has been committed as well. But in light of the guardianship proceedings, I mean, you, I can see a sister's rationale saying, you know, she's thinking she's doing this to keep you safe. But right. I think in light of the guardianship, it's going to really come down to what your guardianship attorney uh, advises you in light of your specific uh, scenario there based on your particular facts, which should be discussed in the confidential setting of your attorney's office. One one final thing, Patrick, if sure, I may. Um, is this statement true? Okay, I've done a lot of research. Here's the statement. The principal can override either their own POA if they have the capacity to do so. So in general, so and again, for your particular situation, make sure you check with your attorney. But in general, power of attorney documents are what we call revocable instruments. So you can yes. take that power of attorney and you can destroy it so long as you are faculty and haven't been deemed incapacitated. So I think it is a okay. general rule, just because you give someone power of attorney doesn't mean you can't ungive it to them and revoke it. Ah, perfect. That's so. what I needed. That's uh... I'll, I'll get in touch uh, again with my uh, my attorney on this end, but I appreciate your time, sir. Yeah, Matt, did you have anything to add to Chuck's question? Think anything criminal's going on there? It uh, doesn't seem like it yet, um, but it's, you know, I don't know if she's you know, it could these type of cases can lead to exploitation sometimes. So you know, just keep good financial. Yeah, there's there, there's a there's a lot of money involved. <laughs> okay, and if I were to do it over again, I wouldn't I wouldn't have picked a sibling as as my uh, poa okay but that's uh, water behind me well and you know chuck i was talking to another attorney yesterday actually about the importance of selecting an attorney in fact in your power of attorney and what i tell clients all the time i say if you have any hesitation about entrusting a family member with this role then it's probably the wrong person because this should be someone yeah. that you sort of trust implicitly when you select uh, a power well of attorney. i'm seven i'm Patrick, I, I'm I'm 73 now, and I did this will when I was 45. So a lot of things changed since that time. But the, I I agree with you that uh, uh, you know I would have done something different. Well, Chuck, 73 is the new 43. Okay, so you got a long. There you go. go. All right. There you go. Thank Chuck, you, sir. Keep us posted on how it turns out. Okay. I will. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673, live and local. Give us a call now. This is the special 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'd love you to call in, 877-943-9673, or email me, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. 
Com. Matt, before we go to our next caller, why don't you just give out your contact information? If people have criminal defense issues, uh, you're the one-stop shop for all things criminal defense. So how would people get in touch with you if they want to talk to you off the air? Yeah, easiest way is 727-446-4800. That's 446-4800 or super simple floridadefense.com i thought you were giving your cell phone for a second i was like oh my well gosh. if they want my strategy <laughs> if they want my cell phone it's easily obtainable <laughs> it's on all our cards along with our email addresses and we regularly text call email our clients i, I love that that's great easily accessible criminal defense attorney 877-943-9673 to be part of today's show the 100th edition of the attorney patrick smith show let's go to polk city next we're going to talk to is it rock in polk city yeah you're, you're, uh, yes, is, this is Rock from Polk City. All right, Rock, how can we help you today? Uh, I bought a classic car when I was in Canada. Um, I brought it through customs, no issues. I brought it down here to, they said I had to get it inspected and drive it to Tampa. So I got a temporary plate, drove to Tampa. They said it doesn't have enough numbers on the VIN. And the numbers on the VIN match the numbers on the title. And... Okay, they, I said, what's the next step? They said, you got to go to court. Why? Because it doesn't have enough numbers. Well, in 1965, it's a 65 Dodge. They only had eight numbers, and that's what's on the title. So anyway, um, they said, i got to take it to court. I have called over 20 attorneys. Nobody even will touch this. We don't know anybody who handles cars or car titles. So I was hoping that you could help me or... Point me in a direction where somebody could help me with this. Because I bought the car, I can't drive it. Because you can't get it registered here in the state of Florida. I, that's correct. I have insurance on it. Everything's fine except the place in Tampa where I took it. Uh -huh. They said, no, there's not enough numbers on it. And the numbers match the title. It's To, to me, it's just a, a bump in the road with a snag that I can't get rid of. So anyway, how many numbers do they want? Well, they said it has to have 10. And, and, and cars back then, it only has eight. You know, it has, it has the eight numbers, and I have mm -hmm. a, a clear title. Again, I checked it in Canada to make sure it wasn't stolen with the police. I checked it down here with the, the local police department. It does not have, it's not stolen. There's no liens or anything on it. But the, the one man in Tampa said it doesn't have enough numbers. So when you're in the office there trying to get the vehicle registration, are you dealing with the clerk directly behind the counter or have you elevated it to the supervisor? How, how far up the food chain have you gone, Rock? The supervisor in the local area, Lake Alfred, said I couldn't even get a temporary tag. And then Tampa said I could get a temporary tag. I went back to the supervisor and I told them that they said, yes, you can get a temporary tag. So I could drive it to Tampa. Once I took it to Tampa, they said, no, it does not have enough numbers. It fails. And they gave me a paper that said failed. So, and where, where do you do then? I went to three tag agencies. They will not touch it because this paper from Tampa is the inspection paper to allow this car to be legally brought into this country or I can drive it. Um, <laughs> it's an American car. It's a Dodge. It was built in Detroit. Yeah, Matt, no Matt, do you have any advice for Rock on that? Do you know? I mean, I'm thinking about some kind of declaratory action. Maybe he just files something that's non-adversarial, just noticing the state that he's going to be petitioning to get a registration. What do you think? Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. I mean, I, I've seen <laughs> many, I've seen many, many VIN numbers and they're a lot longer than 10 characters sure. <laughs> nowadays. Uh, I think they come close to 17 or 18. Um, so I'm not sure about the question, Patrick. There, there is another attorney that I work with, Rock, who I think has experience with this particular issue, uh, and that's Scott, okay. Scott Smothers. So if you give me a call uh, off the air at the office next week, I'll put you in touch with Scott so that he can kind of get you pointed in the right direction. There is a path to success here, and Scott will be the better Sherpa down that path. So Patrick Smith at your local office? Yeah, you can call the 877-754. 6764. Right. That's the toll free number statewide, 877 754 6764. Okay, sounds like a plan. I appreciate the help. Thank you much. No problem, Rock. Good luck. And uh, I'm, I want to stay on top of this with you and Scott because I kind of, I got a feeling that there's lots of people out there who are interested and kind of curious about how this case concludes. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you, Karen. You're welcome, Rock. Have a great day. All right, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of today's 100th episode edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673, or email us, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go next to all the way down to Sun City Center, actually where we started the show with Chuck. Uh, And let's talk to Vern, who's our producer and board operator down at 96.3, your community radio station. Vern, good morning. Good morning, my friend. Uh, Congratulations on 100. I've been here every step of the way, except, of course, the one I took off to go to my 55-year high school reunion this past month. (laughs) And I had somebody else take care of it. But uh, everything has been going great here, and I'm very, very happy for you. I'm I'm thrilled that you've... uh, been a success in this area. It, it's just great. You know, I, you know how I am about when good things happen to good people. Wow, Vern, I appreciate your kind. A lot of you don't know, so we it takes a, a team of people to put on this show every week, and and Vern is no small part of that because Vern is the sort of unofficial statistician who actually sent me an email to let me know we were having our one hundredth episode. And uh, without Vern, I probably would have just sailed by it and not realized we were at number 100 because I part of me just can't believe it because it's flown by. But Vern, uh, you guys, uh, you and your wonderful wife, Elisa, down there in Sun City Center and all the the support that you guys show us uh, through the station, uh, it's greatly appreciated. And again, thank you for your kind words and congratulations. And thank you for all that you do every week to make sure the folks down there in Sun City Center get the show. Oh, it, it's uh, it's a labor of love. Um, we, we try to take great care of the community station so that it can become the valuable resource that we want it to be. Well, and, uh, and I can't tell you, it's probably so last time I was in Sun City Center, I think at least half of my appointments were listeners of the show and that's how they heard about me so it's uh it's greatly appreciated by me and it's a great avenue i think we're reaching a lot of people not just in sun city but throughout the state but it's because of wonderful producers and board operators like you who help us down there get the show on the air so again Vern, thank you i'm very very happy to do it give me a quick answer to this one what is the extra day that you have added here in this town because i'm liable to get asked so what we were doing is I was actually there every other Tuesday, and now I'm there every Tuesday. So uh-huh. so we've yeah. added an entire – so now I'm there every week, basically, and mm-hmm. that, that's what it is. But we're already – believe it or not, we're already in need of even more time there given the demand that we've got. So we're, uh, we're constantly shopping ways to meet that ever-growing demand down in Sarasota and Sun City Center, and, uh, and we're doing a great job with it, I think, and uh, the demand continues to rise. They told me the other day that – the office now, uh, they said they're averaging like 200 phone calls a day, and uh, it's just continuing to grow. And it's because of you know the support of wonderful people like you and everybody else out there who helps support the show. Well, thank you very much for the kind words. Congratulations again, my best to Joe Weaver, and you're an absolutely adorable young bride. And uh, you know where I am. You call if you need me. Thank you, Vern. We appreciate you. Have a great Saturday. All right. You too, buddy. Thanks. All right. That was uh, Vern, our board operator down at Sun City Center on 96.3, your community radio station in Sun City Center. So thank you again, Vern. 877-943-9673 to be part of today's show. 877-943-9673, our very special 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Next, we're going to go to Hillsborough County, to Tampa, and we're going to talk to Edward. Edward, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's good to be gone. Yeah. How can we help you, Edward? Okay. I've got a, a contract I answered for uh, to build an electric truck for somebody. I'm building a, a Suzu cab over all electric vehicle. Mm-hmm. And so it, uh, I have to build it within about eight months. And one of the vendors uh, messed the truck up really bad. Uh, so I had to go and rebuild it myself uh, because he cut all the wires and decided to shorten all the wires, which, of course, messed up all the communications. And uh, he left a lot of bad welds on it. I had to hire a welder to re-weld everything. So I had to bring it from Kansas back to Tampa to do it, redo it myself. So in the contract, it says if there's, any, uh, if there's anything extra or there's uh, some type of catastrophe or anything like that, that we split the cost. So the original cost was about $220,000 to build this vehicle. Okay, so at that point, now it took an extra six months to build the vehicle. We both agreed, 
uh, to take the extra six months and go ahead and finish the vehicle, which we did. The vehicle is running. It's going down the road. Uh, it's an electric motor connected to an Allison transmission, uh, which I patented. And the, the guy uh, wants my patent. He wanted to merge with me, okay? And he ended up lying to uh, the, the people that hold the patent. And they said, no, we're not going to allow any kind of merge with this individual. So he became upset. Uh, about not being able to do the merge. So in essence, what he did, once the vehicle was done, on the road, videos, showing customers or everything, he refused to pay the remaining balance of the vehicle. So I took, uh, I ended up putting about $80,000, uh, my own money, into the vehicle to finish the vehicle. It was really 150000 I put into it. But we're supposed to split any cost uh, that was extra, so that equals to eighty thousand dollars, and I logged everything day by day, the expenses, the labor, the hours, everything. And we went back and forth with uh, uh, our uh, business uh, attorneys, not not uh, for this type of situation, just contractual attorneys. And he ended up uh, taking one of my other vehicles, uh, and uh, he and then now he's going around saying that I stole the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now I won't return the vehicle to him because I said, look, you pay the $80,000 and I'll deliver the vehicle to you. He goes, no, I only want to pay two. I feel like I only pay oh, 2000 Then he went up to 30000 So now he's going to all the local police departments and he's saying that the vehicle stole. So I've had to contact the police. They contacted me. They contacted the lawyer. We are going back and forth on a civil matter. And now all the police come back and they say, no, this is a civil matter. You can't do anything. So what I did is I took all the parts off the vehicle, and I said, come get your truck. You're, you think your truck's stolen, come get your truck. So now I'm wondering, what legal ramifications do I have? How do I get my $80,000 back? Uh, how does he get what, – what right does he have at this point? You see where everything has become a fiasco now? And he probably doesn't know which way to go. I don't know which way to go, but I mean, the facts are there and the extra was spent is in fine detail and it's been sent to him and he just ignores it. He completely ignores the fact on the contract that anything extra, he pays half and I pay half. And I've honored my agreement and he won't, he wouldn't accept the vehicle. So he's breached the contract. He was supposed to buy another 100 vehicles, so he breached that part of the contract. And I, uh, my attorney has said I fully uh, fulfilled my part of the contract. Hey, so hey I'm, I'm going to you... jump in because yeah. we're kind of spiraling and circling back to facts multiple times. Okay. So, so you just okay. said the most relevant point for me. You said your attorney. You have an attorney representing you. You've got to go back to them. I can't really give you any commentary if yeah, you have he, counsel. Yeah, he doesn't do this kind of law. That's the problem. I have to go out and find a new attorney, find out what to do. He mm. says he doesn't do this kind of law. So, yeah. no, I don't have an attorney. So on this particular matter, then, what you need to do is get with a good attorney have them review your contract. And it sounds to me like a contract enforcement case. You're going to seek some sort of specific performance for enforcing the terms of the contract that everybody entered into. Or if someone breached, hopefully the contract spoke to the remedy for breach of contract, and then you'll pursue that remedy through your attorney. If the counsel you've worked with previously does not handle these sorts of cases, again, I mentioned him here previously to another caller, Scott Smothers, is a great general civil litigation attorney that we work with. I would be happy to review the contract with you and tell you what options you may have available to you. But I want to ask you a question, Ed, before we let you go. Have you seen the new show? And I forget what platform it's on, if it's Apple TV or Netflix, but it's with Robert Downey Jr. And he's converting vehicles like these classic Chevy pickup trucks. He's converting them to electric vehicles. Have you seen this show, Edward? Yeah, a number of people have contacted me about this because uh, the Shark Tank wanted me uh, at one point, and I've had a lot of requests to be on TV with my my technology because I built the very first all-electric F-150 in 2018, and it's still running to this day. Built the first all-electric school bus for Bluebird, uh, 80 passenger school bus, which is also all over YouTube. Wow! Just by typing in Edward Montfort on YouTube. You can see all these electric vehicles that I created, but the problem I'm having, everybody is trying to steal the technology from me. So I gave it away to another firm that pretty much holds my technology. Hmm. And 
And so they own 51% of that technology now. And they are protecting it. You know, they don't allow me into certain agreements and things like that. And what, uh, so what, that's just technology. What is, station are you listening on, Edward? Uh, 102.5. All right. We appreciate you listening on the bone. But did, I don't know if you heard last week's show, but the very last caller of the last week's show was a veteran uh, newsman by the name of Roger. And he called in to remind everyone that the Tesla that catches on fire burns like at three times the temperature of a normal car fire. And if a Tesla battery is exposed to salt water, how it's much more likely to burst into flame. Say someone happens to own a Tesla or two. What would you say to them to sort of calm down their anxieties when they're just driving down I-4 or 275 and they're wondering if they're going to spontaneously combust? Yeah, it does take time. Uh, I did start off as a lithium battery uh, developer back in 2008, and it was me against Tesla and at a show in Anaheim. Who, who won that battle? I'm just curious. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, Ian Wright and the guys at the booth next to us won when Elon came in the next year and bought them out. Uh, but that's where I just moved forward and I said, look, I'm I'm just going to build school buses. People request me to do things like that. But back to the battery. As I start off with batteries, it's the battery management system. And yes, Tesla does have some of the best software. But there's there's no way to tell. There's there's new battery management systems that will alert you by having more sensors in it. So it will let you know when a battery is too low or when it, it gets uh, thermally uh, overinduced, which means if that battery gets over a certain temperature, like 160 degrees to 180 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit, what happens is it's got that electrolyte inside of it, and that combusts just like gasoline. And that that is the problem. And your NMC with your Teslas are much more dangerous than what we use on the electric trucks and buses. The electric tr- trucks and buses use an LFP, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Yeah, I'm, Those are much harder to catch on fire, and the aviation industry uses the LFP, not the Tesla NMC-type batteries, much safer batteries. So your trucks and buses, uh, you pretty much never hear those about catching on fire unless they use the NMC. And now the schools, Bluebird, school buses, they only use LFP. Certain government vehicles only use LFP or lithium iron phosphate. And that's what I use. And I, I run a, also run a, a golf cart battery. Would you drive, so many, would you drive a yeah. Tesla? Yes. Yeah, okay. I would, I, I would be, uh, I've got to park it in my garage. All right. I do have an electric Cadillac and I've had a lot of great luck with that. And those are NMC, never had a problem with it. It's a ELR where it's half gasoline, half electric. I can go about 40 miles on electric and then if i want to go further i just put gasoline in it and that gasoline generator on the electric vehicle powers the battery pack and allows me to go further well edward congratulations you just won two tickets to universal orlando for your knowledge and making me feel a little less anxious when i'm on the roadway and also your wonderful knowledge of acronyms is quite impressive so edward just stay on the line i'll have you miko the producer pick up and she'll get all your information uh, and, and you enjoy universal orlando courtesy of 102.5 the bone okay oh wow you just made my wife the happiest person in the world all right i really appreciate that uh, well have a great time on us okay okay thank you yep so bye-bye all righty so this is the attorney patrick smith show 877-943-9673 877-943 Nine six seven three, and it's the one hundredth edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. So feel free to give us a call now if you have any legal questions or you want to provide a commentary. Eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three. You can give us a call now. Uh, next, we, speaking of the bone, let's go to our board operator Isaiah, working the bone board operation for us. Isaiah, happy Saturday. How are you today? Hey, pretty good. And yourself? Good. So Isaiah is uh, there at 102.5 The Bone at the studio in St. Pete and uh, puts our show on the air every Saturday. And I think it's probably fair to say about half of our callers come from just 102.5. Wouldn't you say that's about right, Isaiah? 
or more than half. I bought it like 60, 70%. I mean, one hundred and two five is a <laughs> What a huge faithful Cox employee you are right there, sir. That's, that's good. That's good loyalty right there, Isaiah. We appreciate that. So no, <laughs> you and Scotty Vaughn and uh, Mr. Brennan and Brian and everybody over there at the Cox media group, we appreciate all you guys. And, uh, just want to give you a little on air time because a lot of the you know the behind the scenes guys don't get a lot of on air time. Are there any other shows that you're on the air? Oh yes, uh, I'm on the Mike Radio Show, the Johnny B Show. Uh, we do the fishing show that I'm on from time to time, as well as the Moe's Rock Talk. So I'm on quite a few shows. Well, tell Johnny B and Mo hi for me. They're they're buddies of mine, and uh, I really enjoy their shows. And we appreciate all that you and the rest of the team at one hundred two point five The Bone uh, do for us to make sure our show gets on the air every week. Awesome! Thank you so much. Have a great day, Isaiah. Bye bye. Right, you too. All righty, eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three. Matt, this next question might be for you. So. <laughs> Next, we're going to go to Sarasota. We're going to talk to Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, Patrick. Thanks for taking my call. Sure, Jeff. Hey, hopefully just a very quick question for you. Um, so I'm, I'm divorced, and um, my ex has bought a new home and is living with her new partner. Um, they've not gotten married or anything like that. But I just by accident happened to see uh, online that I maybe don't owe her alimony if they're still living together and in that kind of arrangement. So you said you found this like just Googling or was there a particular source? Uh, uh, Yeah, no, it was on. And I don't even remember the attorney's website, but um, it, it was on somebody's website that you know basically mm-hmm. said that well if they're living together you don't know how money period all right um well let's do I, this I know- let's do this with us in the studio is attorney matt kendall and i've known matt from, gosh we're from the same hometown so yeah. it's been 20 i more longer than that 25 it's been a long time so yeah so matt I, and I went I- to our high my 20th high school reunion so yeah. years several years ago and that and then i think uh before that next time i saw you yeah. like from graduation was we ran into the else each other at the lsat ex- was it the lsat exam yeah the LSAT, yeah, LSAT. Yeah. so um but matt in his former life jeff used to be a family law attorney so let's see if matt will dust off his family laws it seems like once a show you you have to dust off for a family yeah, law question so any commentary or insight for well, our listener jeff yeah jeff I, you know i would contact a family law attorney i mean a lot of them some of them offer pre free consultations some will charge you a couple hundred dollars but you should do it um whenever a spouse's or an ex-spouse's living situation changes it could affect their need and ability in addition um and this is where i i don't want really i don't want to go into a lot of detail is there have been significant changes this year uh to the alimony statutes that since I don't practice family law anymore, I have not brushed up on. So I would certainly consult a family law attorney in your area and go over how those changes and your wife's um, living changes might affect your alimony payments. Yeah. And Jeff, um, I like your answer, but I could have said contact a family law attorney. I mean, <laughs> well, you um, get to give out the name, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll put you in touch with some good family law attorneys down in the Sarasota area, Jeff. That's not a problem. But here's the advice I would give you just to, from a general legal perspective at sort of 30,000 feet. Realize it's Pandora's box. If you go in to start modifying uh, the existing marital separation agreement, the former spouse can say, you know what? This is a good idea. I agree we should modify some things, but I want to swap them out and modify things in my best interest. So just realize sometimes there's value in letting sleeping dogs lie, so to speak, as opposed to going in to modify. So just be aware of that and sort of it's not always a grass is always greener situation. But give me a call at the office next week, Jeff. We'll put you in touch with a family law attorney in Sarasota who will give you a good free consultation. Okay. well, you hit the nail on the head. You know, I I didn't want to go poke a sleeping bear um then make things worse but yeah and always look at what your and always look at what your payment is compared to what you might spend to get a reduction because you could kind of be like where you're 
spending more money, you're spending good money after bad. What Mr. Kendall is referring to is what we call in the industry, the economics of litigation. And yes. that's a fair point. Exactly. I mean, you want to look at, you know, if you have to pay a lawyer, you're going to pay the lawyer, whether you win or lose in this situation, and you may actually come out worse on the other side. So you really want to have that good consultation, maybe with even a couple of family law attorneys and do it blind. And that way you can get their advice. And if they both tell you the same thing, then they're, you know, that more than likely that's the wisest advice to take. So you definitely want to have that consultation with a couple of attorneys and we'll be happy to put you in touch with some Jeff in that uh, Sarasota area. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, Jeff, have a great day. I'll give out the office line as soon as you hang up. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, the 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. The number to reach me at the office, that office line. So if you want to schedule your appointment or get a referral from us, uh, the appointments for Sun City Center, Sarasota, Clearwater, any of those offices, you want to schedule 877 754 6764. That's for your complimentary estate planning consultation. Or if you want to book me to come out and speak to your group organization, no fee for our speaking services. Uh, the number, 877-754-6764. By the way, for those of you in the Claremont area who are listening to the show, this upcoming Friday, the 15th, I will be speaking at Kings Ridge at the clubhouse in the Monte Carlo room. And if uh, history is any indicator, it'll be a packed house. I always look forward to speaking at Kings Ridge. So that'll be at 10 a.m. this upcoming Friday, September 15th at the Monte Carlo room in uh, Claremont, Florida at the Kings Ridge community. So the number. If you want more information on our speaking engagements or to book your complimentary consultation, the office line, 877-754-6764, 877-754-6764. But the number to be part of our 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Brian, the call screener, standing by to answer your legal questions with us in studio attorney matt kendall here to answer all of your criminal defense questions all right yumiko i'm going to talk to bob next but before go ahead and have that clip that i sent you queued up because after bob we'll play the clip and we'll talk to matt about it so let's next go to our board operator bob who's at uh Haines city florida bob welcome yes, to the good attorney morning Smith show how are you good today, morning bob? patrick yes good how, morning how is everything in mine and Matt's home county of Imperial Polk County. Oh, it's just beautiful out here. Beautiful weather, and we're just having a great day. And to enjoy listening to your program, and congratulations on your 100th uh, episode. Well, Bob, I appreciate that, and I appreciate everything that you and the rest of the family at WLVF, Landmark's Voice of Faith, do Amen. every week to, to get us out and on the air. And uh, and it's a wonderful service that you guys provide there in Polk County. And uh, you know, it's it's great. We have uh, some of the best radio stations in Polk County. We certainly, yes, in, in my opinion, no offense to any of our local sheriffs, but I think we have one of the best sheriffs in uh, Grady Judd, uh, whom I've been yes. a fan of my entire life. I think I have. Do you have the complete bobblehead set yet, Bob? I think by, by now my dad's got me the complete set of all the Grady Judd bobblehead dolls. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So anyway, oh. Bob, we appreciate all you guys do. So thank you and the rest of the team there at uh, Landmark's Voice of Faith, WLVF. Hey, man. Congratulations again, Patrick. Thank you, Bob. Have a great day. All right. Yeah. Alrighty, 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. That's your number to be part of our show today. The 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. So, Matt, there was a clip of body cam footage from, I believe, Yumiko, I think it's an Orange County deputy sheriff who was on a traffic stop. And we have it queued up. It's clean for broadcast. We double checked <laughs> that. OK, I just want to make sure. Uh, how long is the total clip, Yumiko? It's a minute long. A minute. Perfect. All right. Go ahead and play the clip. And then, Matt, I want to get your mm -hmm. thoughts on this particular clip. Go All ahead, right. Yumiko. 132 miles an hour. How old are you? You're 16. Whose car is this? Call your father. I need him here now. Dad, this is Corporal Richter at the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I need you to come out here and uh, pick up your son. I'm on the express lanes, I-4 express lanes. I just clocked your son at 132 miles an hour. 132 miles an hour. Can you and uh, another driver come get him? Thank you, sir. You understand if you are 18, you're 
you'd be going to jail for reckless driving. Okay, you're getting a speeding citation that requires a court appearance. You got a appear in court downtown Orlando. That's about it. I'm gonna explain it to your dad. So Matt, what jumps out to you in that clip from wonderful Orange County? And uh, we are so appreciative of the Orange County deputy sheriffs and all that they do to keep us safe. And I think this is a good example of them handling a, a situation that needed to be handled. I think that was an appropriate way to handle a ju- one, a juvenile, um, we'll call defendant. It sounds like he's still getting a, he's getting a mandatory traffic citation for, you know, probably going at that speed, probably 50 miles an hour or more over. And that'll carry, you know, a thousand dollar fine, possible license suspension, obviously points if there's adjudication and, you know, maybe up to a 12 hour driving course uh, if the judge deems appropriate. But it is mandatory. So it's not something he can just go pay. But, you know, it, you know he called the kid's dad. He did everything. I think he was appropriate there. Um, you know, reckless driving, you know, 132 and I forget what the speed limit is. Seven, was it 70 at that particular area? Um, I like how you knew that right away, Peter. Like you're <laughs> intimately familiar with the exact speed in that. Area. <laughs> so you know, I don't see any issues with it. Um, I think everything went good, and yeah, I mean, he's going to have to slow down. The judge might give him a, a tongue lashing when he goes to court, but you know, because he's getting a civil citation, he can hire a lawyer um, such as myself, and they can just go and on the client's behalf, and the client doesn't actually have to even go to court on this. Have you been clocked at 132 miles an hour? Then you need to call attorney Matt Kendall. Yeah, but not right. in Orlando. I don't go to Orlando. No, he doesn't. <laughs> and that, that's what I like about criminal defense attorneys is they're kind of finicky about where they want to go as far as the counties. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think it, it reminded me a little bit of kind of Buford T. Justice. You know, just the way it was like, get your daddy on the phone. Like, I mean, there was just the no middleman conversation. Let's just get the, and you can imagine can you imagine the car ride home that this kid had? Well, I would hope it would be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's going to be way <laughs> you know, worse than was, whatever the judge is going to do. If it was my son, it would definitely be an uncomfortable situation. Yeah, yeah, 130. And but, with Life 360 now, you know, you can uh, you can track and see what your child's highest speed is. So, I mean, this kid was really, I'm, I'm presuming the parents probably had some mechanism for monitoring their child so i hope so yeah um and you know you know in that at those speeds and he got into an accident obviously somebody could easily pass away and at that point he could be charged as an adult and that's a bell possible. you can't unring yeah yeah that's that uh underdeveloped 16 year old male brain right there so but we were never like that no, no i never had a car that could go that fast that's either. true my 1994 <laughs> thunderbird would never quite make 132 (laughs) so uh 877-943-9673 that's your number to be part of the show so people out there are dealing with a traffic uh a citation or a criminal matter they can get in touch with you how buddy uh yeah easiest way uh you can go to our website which we just redesigned uh floridadefense.com florida is spelled out or 727-446-4800 Obviously, uh, easy Google or Avo search can find us as well. Pretty easy. All right. But to be part of the show, 877-943-9673. Let's go to a very patient Helen in Why Mama. Helen, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hi. Um, my husband passed away, and he has one IRA that is in just his name. Uh, it's less than $6,000 and the, um, investment company sent a link to me to fill out a form and told me to take it to the court for, with his last will and testament and death certificate. Now, yesterday, I looked up where the probate court was, and all I got was a list of different lawyer companies. Do I really need a lawyer to do this, and how much would it cost about? Well, I don't think you need an attorney for an administration of this size of a state, Helen. And I, if you give me a call at the office, you're in Y Mama, so we can meet you there in Sun City Center. 
and we would be happy uh-huh. to kind of walk you through the checklist and show you how to get everything filed with the courthouse. Because when the amount's less than $6,000, there are some simpler types of administration that are available to you without doing a formal probate, which is only required when the assets outside of any exemptions exceed $75,000. So there is a simpler okay. path to success here. And the statute specifically allowed this so that you can do it potentially without counsel. Because on these smaller amounts, a lot of times it doesn't even make sense to hire an attorney. Because if you have to hire an attorney, you're losing money or breaking even so they give you these avenues uh, under the statute so we'll walk you through it just uh, do you have your husband's will by chance yes and you have a death certificate without the cause of death uh i have a long form and a short form i need the short form your driver's license copy of that statement of the ira from the custodian for that ira bring it in we'll walk you through it we'll get you squared away how many years were you married what it was 59 after uh, two weeks after he passed. Wow. What's the secret? Share that with the rest of us, if you don't mind. What's the secret <laughs> to 59 years? Oh, I guess patience and understanding. Well, and you know, that's what most wives say. And since your husband's not here to say it, I'm going to say it for him. I think most husbands say the secret to a long marriage is two words. Yes, dear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matt, you, how long have you been married now, Matt? Oh, geez. I hope my wife's not listening. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm about to... Nina, turn the radio up. So. Uh, 13 years. 13 years? Yeah. So I've been married 20. And I'll tell you right now, saying yes, dear. I actually had a conversation with my wife. This was a while ago. But I said, you know, I've discovered something. When I don't listen to you and take your advice, things just kind of go sideways. And then I really just regret that I didn't take your advice. And I ultimately wind up doing what you said to do anyway. So I've just decided I'm going to start doing what you said to do the first time and skipping the whole <laughs> run around. And that just feels like marital wisdom uh, there. And uh, Peter, Peter, the, we know better. Th- there you go. And you're also giving notes to Peter, the intern who's been married. How many months now? Four, oh, four months. Yeah. So Peter, the intern is a newlywed Helen. So thank you for sharing your wisdom. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, where are you at in Sun City? I am in the Pant Wealth Management Building, 1653 Sun City 15, Center Boulevard. 53. And right now, Tom and Robin Pan are celebrating the fact that I just mentioned their building. And as Robin likes to point out to me, uh, and, and a lot of people, and she's accurate, that, that building, that Pant Wealth Management Building is literally dead center of sun city center that is the geographical center of sun city center so uh but yeah just call call the office during the week helen and we'll get you set up with an appointment and they'll give you directions to make sure you know where you're going okay okay what's the phone number 877-754-6764 not not too fast 877-754-6764 Six seven six four. Six seven six four. Helen, you're a treasure, and we'll say a special prayer for you and your late husband. Okay. Thank you. God bless you, my dear. Okay. All righty, let's go straight to Port St. Lucie, and let's talk to Glenn. Glenn, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, good morning, team. How are you? I'm great, Glenn. How can we help you? Uh, I have a, we have a friend of the family that's 87 years old. He was, uh, we found him living in an apartment with no electric, no power, no food. Uh, so we moved him into an assisted living facility and, uh, I, uh, became his, uh, adorable power of attorney to help him out. So help him out with his medical and also help him out with his finances. So the, uh, quick story the assisted living facility takes just about all of his social security check and he has no other income. Uh, so he's comfortable. He's well taken care of. He's cognizant. Uh, he's still able to move around. But the problem is he has probably about twenty-five dollars to $30,000 credit card debt and he has no way of paying. And so I, I am on his checking account uh, to help uh, make sure that his ALF payments are made and his phone bill is paid and all that sort of thing. So my question is twofold. Number one, am I liable for, or can these uh, credit card companies, and that's all it is, no credit card debt, can the credit card companies come after me because I am on his checking account 
it's a That's stretch, but it's one. it's a stretch, but it is possible. Um, so I would just say be careful and make sure that power of attorney. So you have an attorney representing you, or the attorney who drafted the power of attorney represents the family member. No, I had the uh, I had the documents drafted uh, myself. I didn't have an attorney do it. It's okay. A, well, get an attorney to review power those. Of attorney form. Yeah, get an attorney okay. to review those because I want to make sure there are some statutory rules about the execution of power of attorney. Attorneys. So, Glenn, okay. if you want us to take a look at it with you, just get them to me at the office next week, and uh, I'll take a look at it with you, and we'll get you squared away as far as sort of what path to success is going to be best for your friend, whether it's some sort of bankruptcy or something of that nature, okay? Yeah, all right. So, um, I can call the 877 number. Yep, 877-754-6764, Glenn. We'll get you squared away, Got okay? You. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, the 100th edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Peter, you prepared something. We have about a minute. Is it a minute doable? Yes, it can be. Go ahead, Peter. <clears throat> what you've prepared for our 100th show. So for the 100th show, I found an article about a family that did a 100-year trust. And so they did this because the parents, I guess the grandparents of these three generations, wanted all of their linear descendants to be equally wealthy. And so to do that without having to pay gift taxes by having you know, their children give loads of money to each other, they set up a trust and had a trustee kind of manage it and handle it. Um, and so they would pay for medical bills, college, housing costs that so they could all live equally within you know that same wealth line. They did this for 100 years to avoid the rules against perpetuities. All right. Well, there you go. The 100-year estate plan per Peter the intern. And uh, I think now, like we were talking off the air, uh, I think it's up to 1,000 years or you can still use the yeah, common law rules. So, Florida. well, thank you to everyone who was a part of the show. Thank you, Matt, for being a part can of the show. Can I just show. say happy birthday to Brittany? Her yes. 30th birthday today. Happy birthday, Brittany. We appreciate you uh, there in the uh, Clearwater office. So thank you so much and uh, for all that you and the rest of the team do there. And uh, Matt, thank you. And thank you to everyone who's part of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. We couldn't do it without all you guys, especially you, our listeners. And uh, the number for next week, 877-943-9673. The office line, 877-754-6764. Thank you guys so much. Here's to the next 100. The preceding was sponsored by the law offices of Patrick L. Smith. W-282-CI Tampa, W-271-CY Lakeland, W-262-CP Bayonet Point. Online at letstalkfaith.com. Or listen on TuneIn and Odyssey. Two things that hit a family budget the hardest, the price of gas and of groceries. Let us ease that pain at the pump when you enter the $18,000 gas and groceries giveaway. The grand prize winner gets $10,000 in gift cards for gas and groceries. Three first prize winners each get $1,000 gift cards, and 10 second prize winners will get $500 gift cards for gas and groceries. That's $18,000 total. To enter, visit letstalkfaith.com and pull down the fan club tab to contests and sweepstakes. Bill Bunkley with something to think about. The Florida Supreme Court heard oral arguments from Planned Parenthood of Florida and lawyers.